I can interpret and represent patterns when multiplying by 10, 100, and 1,000 in arrays and numerically. So first of all, we're going to start with a review. Find the areas and perimeters of the following rectangles. Draw the rectangles if you need a visual. Um, my suggestion would be draw the rectangles. So go ahead, take some time, draw the rectangles, and then solve to find the area and the perimeter. And remember, when you label it, to label it correctly. Label each one correctly. Remember area, you always square it. So pause and solve. Okay, find the areas and perimeters of the following squares using the provided lengths. Why do we only need one measurement when we're talking about squares? What's so different about squares than any other shape that we only need to know one side? So go ahead, draw the shape, solve it, area and perimeter. Okay, on this one, you're going to draw the following rectangles, then solve for x and the perimeters. So draw the shape, they're rectangles, that means two sides are the same, and then the opposite two sides are the same. Now we've given you the area, find the perimeter, and then find x. Actually you should probably find the x first, then solve for perimeter. Remember, to get the area, you multiply length times width. So, if you already know what the area is, you're going to do the opposite of multiply. Okay, so, today we're going to talk about arrays and using the place value chart to multiply. And I remember using the chart in module one. How many groups of three ones do you see? Three ones. How many groups of three ones do you see? I see one group of three ones, so I have one group of three. I could also say three ones times one. Three times one is three. Suppose I wanted to multiply three ones by ten instead. How would I do that? How do you think I would do that? Why don't you pause and see if you can figure out how I might do that and then play to see how I solve. So we could move 3 ones times 10 equals 3 tens because we could move each disc over to the tens place and get 3 tens. Because every time you move over one column to the left, you've, you have to multiply by 10. Remember, our place value chart is based on tens. What if I multiplied that by 10? Because right now I have three ones times 10, and let's take it by 10 again. Look at my equation. I started with three ones. What did I multiply three ones by to get to three? hundreds. I had to multiply by 10 times 10. Well, another way to say 10 times 10 is 100. So I could say 3 ones times 100 equals 3 hundreds. Okay, we multiply 10 and then 10 again. So I actually multiplied by 100 because 10 times 10 equals 100. What would 3 times 1,000 look like? Show me. So 3 ones times 10 times 10 times blank equals blank. Go ahead, pause. Draw it out on the chart. Push play when you're ready to move on. So when you multiply 3 times 10, 3 ones times 10 times 10 times 10 
you end up with 3,000s. Or we could say 3 ones times 1,000 equals, what does it equal? 3,000s. Let's try it with four. So right now we have four ones. Multiply four ones times 10 times 10 times 10. Show me what that looks like. Now I'm gonna tell you a little secret. If I multiply any number times 10, it's that it, you get the same number, but you just add a zero. How many zeros do I have when I have 10 times 10 times 10? How many zeros are in there? It's three. So also, if you think about it, if I have four ones and I add three zeros onto it, I end up with 4,000. So hopefully we'll eventually get to that, but you know, I'm just kind of giving you a little preview here. So we're gonna multiply the four ones times 10 times 10 times 10. Show me what that looks like. Then write your answer in the space above. Okay, so instead of saying four ones times 10 times 10 times 10, I could say four ones times 1,000. And what does that equal? What does four ones times 1,000 equal? Okay. That was the easy stuff. Now we're gonna get a little trickier. Now if you know anything about place value, it's not gonna really be that tricky for you because you kind of have an idea of your numbers that are in the tens place, in the ones place, in the hundreds place. So we're gonna start with 15 times 10. Well, let's look at our 15. What number is in the tens place on 15? Okay, the number one is in the tens place. So I have one ten. How many ones do I have? I have five ones. Now I'm gonna take each of those and I'm gonna multiply by 10. 15 times 10 equals, what does it equal? Well, I end up with 100. How many tens? Five tens, how many ones? zero. So 15 times 10 is 150. Okay, let's look at the next slide. 22 times 100. So what's the number in the tens place? The number in the tens place is two. So we're going to draw our two discs in the tens place. And what number is in the ones place? Two. So we're gonna draw our two discs in that place. And now we're gonna multiply it by 100. So we're not just going over one column because remember, when you go over one column, you multiply by 10. You go over another column, you multiply by 10 again. 10 times 10 is 100. So how many places over do I go? Two. Another trick is I have two zeros in 100. So I will go two places over on my place value chart. If I multiply by a thousand, how many places over do you think I'll go? Okay, so 22 times 100 equals two, okay, I have two in the thousands. I have two in the hundreds. How many do I have in the tens? Zero. How many do I have in the ones? Zero. So my answer is 2,200. Okay. Decomposing, four times 20 equals find a 10. Well, why would we find a 10 when we're multiplying by 20? Is the place value chart based on 20s? No. It's based on 10, so you always want to find the 10 in whatever you're multiplying by. So just like 3 times 100 could be expressed as 3 times 10 times 10, there are different ways to show 4 times 20 to help us multiply. What is another way to express 4 times 10? So 
So we could say four, because we found the 10, and how many 10s are in 20? Two, two 10s. So I could say four times two 10s. So you notice I have four times two in my ones times 10. Or I could call it four times two times 10 or eight times 10. Because when I multiply the four times the two, I get eight. So if I say four times two, that leaves me with a 10 instead of 20. Because I have two tens. So when multiplying with multiples of 10, you can decompose multiples of 10. You can decompose a factor to help you solve. In this example, we expressed four times 20 as four times two times 10. Multiples. Multiples are the numbers, when you multiply, it's the answer, multiples, like, 36 is a multiple of 6 because I can multiply 6 times 6 to get 36. A factor is the number that goes into another number. So the factor of 36 could be 6 times 6. 6 times 6 would be factors. 36 would be the multiple, which is the answer, the product. Okay, so decompose is to break it down. So in this problem, notice we have four two times and we pulled the 10 out. We pulled the 10 out of the 20 and it left us with two. So we have four two times, which would be eight times 10. Okay, so this is simplifying strategy. I'm gonna have you try it out. Solve six times 400 not 10 this time. So we have six times four hundreds. We're not pulling a 10 out, but we're pulling out something else because we have four hundreds. Couldn't we pull a hundred out of four hundreds? And that would leave us with a four. So we could say six times four, which is six times four times 100. Six times four equals, what's six times four equal? 24. 24 times 100 equals 2,400. And the way I knew that was I see that I have two zeros in 100. So I'm going to have two zeros in my answer. Nifty little trick there, huh? Okay. Let's look at the next one. Four times 500. So, start with four times 500. Or I could say four times five times 100. What's four times five? Four times five is 20. So, four times 500, I would have 20. How many zeros do I have in my 100? Two, so I'm gonna add two more. Four times 500 is 2,000. Okay, let's look at this problem set. Draw number discs and arrows to show, as shown, to represent each product. So if I have five, I'm starting with how many ones? I'm starting with five ones. Two, three, four, five. Five ones. Two, three, four, five. Five ones times 100. So couldn't I just go over two places? I could. 
one, two, three, four, five. Five times 100 equals 500. But what they want you to do on this is to actually just go step by step. So you could do that first, or you could do it a little step by step here. Either way, you got the answer. So I start with five ones. times 10, which will do five right there. Times 10 again. Equals, well, where did my number end up? In the hundreds, so it equals 500. So five ones times 100 equals 500. So let's look down here at number four. 12 times 10, remember? Look at the tens place. What do I have? I have one in the tens place. And how many do I have in the ones? Two. And I'm multiplying by 10. So I think you can figure those out. Pretty easy stuff. And that's it for today.